Hello and welcome to the latest Love Rugby League Weekly. I'm Andrew Davish, your host today. I'm joined by James and Alex, who's on placement with us in the Love Rugby League offices. Uh, first of all, we'll jump into the international action. James, England nil, New Zealand 34 in the third and final test series at Ellen Road on Sunday. Your thoughts? It was a bit like Sod's Law, wasn't it, Drew, I think? Uh, obviously a good crowd there at Leeds on uh, on Sunday and it looked like a real it was a real occasion, a real sort of what you want International Rugby League to be. Um obviously if you're at the game, keen to hear your thoughts and whatever, but um yeah, England just never really got, got going, did they? I think I think certainly that that third the third New Zealand try sort of killed the game a bit, didn't it? I think if it had gone in twelve nil at that time maybe it might have been a little bit different, but um, the different. I know we talked about it this week. Nakarima and Johnson just another level to sort of England's half. So a um, bit disappointing because of the crowd. It'd be not, you know it's a shame that the theatre that was created at Leeds didn't witness the sort of game that we saw maybe at Anfield and at, and at Hull. Uh, by the way, if you want us to discuss anything rugby league related, just get your comments in on the comments section, and we'll we'll do. Our very best to answer them, Alex. Uh, England can take a, a lot of credit though from from this series. It, it's it's important not to just concentrate on that third and final. Oh yeah, I think you've got to look at it as a as a as all the games at once because obviously people say there's not much to play for for England. They won the series, but um, I'll just echo what James said uh, that the event side of it, especially what I saw when I watched it, uh, the full like, the crowd and. The remembrance thing and everything was done right off the field so I think it needs to be credited um, so yeah but the series itself I think has been a success I think not just for England for the international game I mean Kevin Sinfield said on Friday at the World Cup event that you know they were, they wanted to go 3-0 that, you know and that was the thing it wasn't acceptable unless they, they didn't want it to be acceptable that they just won the series they didn't want to go 3-0 and win it so uh, I guess I'm sure they'll be, they'll be disappointed to uh, for it to have ended how it did and it's also the fact that they got the, the way they lost yeah. 34 nil. like if you lose a game you lose a game but it seems a bit I've seen some ridiculous comments on Twitter uh, about it should be based on aggregate score <laughs> well, which, was, uh, which was interesting because obviously you know England won <laughs> two narrow games and then got absolutely pasted but yeah. the yeah. fact of the matter is England won two games New Zealand won one I think you know uh, the argument is with the aggregate is that um, you know you then don't have a dead rubber in the third test but you say that but if someone wins the first the first test 30 nil loses the second test by two. The third test still got to end up 30 nil to the other team for it to be anything anyway. So, uh, so yeah, that's no, it should have been made. Made. It's, it's, um, <laughs> it seemed a successful congress in in York, certainly the the rugby league international federation last week as well. It's been confirmed. Well, the plans have been approved for a Great Britain return next year. They will re, uh, tour. The Southern Hemisphere, they won't play Australia in 2019, they'll play New Zealand, Tonga, uh, Samoa, Fiji and Papua New Guinea. Uh, your thoughts on that, we'll come to you James first of all. I, obviously they were keen to, to get this Great Britain tour done, obviously it had been announced a while ago hadn't it, because this calendar had sort of been agreed and then of, of course Australia sort of messed around with it a little bit, it's positive for the game that you've got this eight year plan that's going to going to come out and that needs to be you know really re the reality is is that we should already know what the fixtures for next year are now we need to start knowing two years in advance and i think this world cup the 2021 world cup is going to help that because the fixtures for that will be known in 2019 so you'd like to think that probably by this time next year you're going to know when all the internationals are in 2020 and in 2021 which is good uh, john dutton the the chief exec of the 2021 world cup he they were, they really wanted Australia over here in 2020 because they feel like a big test series against Australia will, will sort of whet the appetite, if you like, to get the crowds in for, for the 2021 World Cup, which um, you know I was at the event on Friday in Leeds and I think more than 80% of the games are going to be held up, up north, which is good for the, the Heartland supporters of rugby league, but there will still be games in London and, and in other areas as well. The important thing is, I guess, now is for rugby league fans to sort of put the put the money where the mouths are a little bit. Everyone bangs on about we need bigger crowds, and it's like, well, we're the only one. There's enough of us as a collective at the moment to actually fill those grounds. So, um, the Great Britain tour, you know, it's it's an. I mean, the, the, there's probably a debate to be had about Great Britain as a whole. Um, 
I think I think it was interesting actually. I was I was doing some research. I think there's a massive opportunity for rugby league to almost own British rugby, British rugby league as a brand. I think they could do that, but you know, the the reality is that the Great Britain team is effectively just the England team in a in a different jumper. Um, and how you get ever get around that, I'm not too sure. I think the old way we have it, where you know, like we had the old England Day when Great Britain was around last time. England Day could effectively now be England Knights, you know, and they compete with the with the second tier nations because ultimately, apart from New Zealand and Australia, certainly in the Northern Hemisphere, there's just no competition for, for Great Britain. I know we chatted about that a little bit last week. Good to see England facing Tonga again or ne- next year, Alex. Uh, obviously, we, we remember what happened in the World Cup last year. It was a very close game. It could have gone either way. The Tongans were a little bit upset with the decision at the end of the game. Fantastic that England get to play the Matty Mar next year. Massively. All, all those games uh, I'm excited for. Uh, it's just, obviously, the lack of the Australia game uh, is, is gutting for a lot of fans. But, yeah... Um, I think it's a testament to International Rugby League as well because if you would have said that maybe a few couple of years ago, those fixtures, I don't think it'd generate anywhere near the excitement it is doing now. Um, for GB Lions though, um, I, li- I like the kits, I like that idea of it, but it's effectively going to be an England squad, so I don't know how to get around. I think, I mean, I, I'm not too fussed about Australia really because I think I, I just think that because we've seen it with New Zealand that England have played New Zealand so many times, it gets a bit savy, so I think. You know, ultimately, we can look forward to it. It almost makes the Australia Test Series in 2020 even more anticipated. It's the first time there's been a series since 2003. You know, England won't have played Australia since the World Cup final. You know, so I, I just think, you know, you only have to look at Rugby Union, England All Blacks. They haven't played over here. Um, they haven't played the All Blacks over here for, like, I don't know what it was, like four years. They haven't played the All Blacks at all for four years. They hadn't played at Twickenham for well over long before that, and it was a real anticipation ahead of it. And I think that's what they're trying to do with international rugby league. And you know, I know there was a few people who were, were commenting negative. I believe they're going to do a ticket ballot for the World Cup, which is obviously a really bold step. Um, and obviously, to make that happen, make that work, you've really got to make it something that people want to go to. Uh, and so that's the big challenge. But I, you know, I think that's a, that's a positive and. Um, like I said, there's still question marks, I think, over the direction of of what you want to do with GB. But honestly, I would... Because I, 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 you can affect... I mean, I know it's a bit difficult because of the Toronto and Toulouse thing, but imagine that Toronto and Toulouse go up into Super League. You could then effectively rebrand the rest of Rugby League, British Rugby League, and have British Rugby League Division 1, British Rugby League Division 2, feeding down to the Conference League, the new, summer, um, the new Southern Premier League. I think, for me, that's a good opportunity for a brand, but um, we'll see what happens. But... The game's going to be great, you know, especially, you know, you presume Sky will pick them up next year and, um, you know, it'd be great for, what, you can have, what, four or five weeks or next year where you can wake up on a Saturday morning and watch uh, some real decent games. It's, it's good to see that there, there's plans in place now, though, because we, we've seen so many times in rugby league before that everything seems to be, not right in the last minute, but it just seems to be a couple of months before, or oh, we'll do that this autumn, or oh, we'll, we'll go there, we'll bring them over, over here. It's good to see that the plans are in place yeah. this time. I think it's also like what we're saying about what they're doing right off the field. Um, we're starting, I think, to see a bit of that. The fact we have got these, this, this schedule, like we've, have we ever had that really? Yeah. That so they, they, they have been trying to get the calendar in for a bit, haven't they? And yeah. for whatever reason, it, it, you know, it's not come off. But you know, the, the fact that we've got World Cups every four years, that was a big because obviously we went, we went from two thousand to two thousand and eight. So there was an eight year gap there. Then from two thousand eight to twenty thirteen, there was a five year gap. Whereas at least now, you know, it's thirteen, seventeen, twenty one, twenty five. So you know, Nigel Wood gets a lot of criticism, but I know he's probably been the main driver behind getting this international calendar and and having the games in play. You want, you know, reality is that during this test series, you want to be plugging tickets for next year's test yeah. series. You know, and that and that's, I guess, the only. Question mark at the moment is what international rugby is going to be over here next year. Um, you know, I we we, met, we talked about this last week, Drew, about England Knights. I think that's a big opportunity for, you know, if England Knights were to play Wales, Scotland, Ireland over here, those are the games that you can push to sell tickets for, and and hopefully, you know, hopefully go again because I think people would turn out to watch the Knights. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think that I think we said last week it's that it's probably one of the only times I'll agree with you, James. Where, <laughs> where the, the the potential in the nights is is massive. I think we've got to use that, and and we've got to keep the nights. Uh, for for me, we've got a couple of questions in 
from people on Facebook. Mark Henry says Brian McDermott thoughts on him going to Toronto and replacing uh, Paul Rowley. I'm excited to see it. I'm you know, glad he's back in the game. Uh, I didn't think he should have been sacked because I think it was a situation they were later familiar to. Mm -hmm. They were in a very similar situation a few years ago. They got out of it and became champions a couple of years after that. So it could have happened again. Maybe it's just the way he goes, but he's back in the game and you know what a what a uh, appointment Toronto I mean, the the project everything they want to do big names players now coaches so yeah it's great. Do, do you think he was needed at Toronto, James? Um, it, it's definitely an interesting one because I think obviously McDermott's like Harlequin as long goes you know and so he's got that experience of sort of being away from from the Heartland so I think I think I think everyone sort of saw it coming a little bit you know he, he's done the USA job hasn't he before. Um, it, it was, we were poking around yesterday. He, he, he's very, been very public about not liking plastic pitches before, so that's interesting <laughs> that he's because uh, obviously he's going over to Toronto. But um, it, I, it, I think it's a good challenge for him as well because you know he still get despite the impressive honours that he's got both as a player and as a coach, he still seems to have this faction of people that are unconvinced by him and criticise him. You know, and, and you know, and people ask the question, well, when he was at Leeds. Was he just coach of a good team? You know, he had Simfield all them and sort of players. So it's a good opportunity for him to prove himself. Toronto, you know, for Paul Rowley, it's a it's a tricky one for him because you know he's had he's basically had three years in championship now with the biggest spending teams and not managed to get the job done. You know, they've romped, he's romped the league with Leeds twice and now with Toronto, but then not managed to get that step up in Super League, and it's like. That's probably harming his chances of ever getting a shot at coaching in Super League. It'd be interesting to see where he, where he goes from here now. Because I think he'll have a little bit of a break, won't it? Yeah. Um, and obviously there's a, a, a situation going on at the one that's surrounding Lee. They've only got two players yeah. actually on the books, which is, I think, to my understanding, Kevin Leroy and uh, Reece Evans. Uh, John Duffy, uh, Featherstone Rovers boss, he, uh, he's been linked with the, the league job. Yeah, I think you know. Obviously, we had that in off the record a few, a good few weeks ago. So, yeah, I mean, I've sort of been expecting Duffy to, to end up there. Um, interesting to see what happens with Lee. They're still battling. Still living around the area. Yeah, yeah. As well, I mean, it's going to be tricky for Lee because they are going to be all right. They are going to be in the fixtures and whatnot. But I think um, they're on special measures at the moment, and it's like you know they've got to resolve it because you've got to sign players soon. As for Paul Rowley. Um, You've got to give him credit to be fair because you know he he, he went out on a whim and, and went to the Toronto. It's difficult, but you know it's a bit like you know at the end of the day, for all the money in the world, you've still got to put a team together that can win matches. And you know we've seen club, you know Salford's a good example where you know not spending a load of money doesn't necessarily guarantee success. And obviously you know Toronto full time and you know the players they were signing were at another level certainly in League One, but you know we're still being able to to manage that process. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with. The, the Toronto squad now McDermott's there he's almost inheriting what they've got um, you know they'll obviously be heavy favourites for, for the championship next season it'd be interesting who, who makes this as, as Paul Rowley made these signings at Toronto do you think um, they, because obviously they brought in six pretty high profile signings well obviously they? Brian you'd imagine Brian Noble's probably the, the main yeah. driver behind the signings maybe um, I, w I would probably say um, I mean, I think ultimately what happens at Toronto at the moment is they have a look at any player who becomes available. Uh, you know, anyone who's out of contract in NRL and Super, they do probably have a look at. And then, you know, you saw with Gareth O'Brien, with Mason Kate and Brown, with Joe Westerman previously, that they will go after certain players that they, they, they fancy and, and pay a transfer fee for. Uh, keep your comments coming in. We're, we're, we'll get through as many as we possibly can. Uh, we'll get on to the New Look Challenge Cup system and the uh, 1895 Cup in a little while as well. We'll just keep going through some of your comments. Uh, Matthew Morrison says, your thoughts on Marty uh, Tapao going to Leeds? Possibly, he's rumoured. Uh, New Zealand uh, back rower who can also play the front row if needs be. Uh, currently at Manly. Uh, can he make the switch to Super League or is he on uh, too big a salary at uh, the Sea Eagles? Um, it's a, I mean, you know, it's an interesting one with Leeds because obviously they're making noises about maybe bringing in some big name players. You know, they've got Conrad Hurrell already and um, 
you know, obviously it's great. It'd be good for the game to bring in as many big name players as you as you can and, and NRL quality players. Certainly, Leeds need to recruit, and they're obviously scratching around a little bit at the moment. So, um, do you think it's like a rebuilding job? Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. You, the way, Leeds under Leeds didn't underachieve last season. Leeds were poor last season because they hadn't recruited very yeah. well. You know, you've got all these legends who are dipping out of the team, and you know, uh, and they've lost key men over the last what three or four years. Yeah. And the replacements that they've brought in, they've either relied too much on young lads who've not quite, you know, got there, and then not recruit. You know, you even look at that. Yeah, if you think back to when. Danny Maguire or whatever was coming through, they still had quality around him to bring him into the team. Whereas I think they've probably they've probably been a bit overly ambitious in my opinion in, in saying, well, you know, Sutcliffe can take over Sinfield's mantle and, you know, Jack Walk, you know, Jack Walk is a fantastic player, but he can't do everything on his own, do you know what I mean? So I think certainly I mean obviously the new coach will want to get his own ideas in and uh, his own players and, and stuff like that. So but you know, you, you look at it, what, we're middle of November now, mm. pre-season starting, you've not got a great deal of time now to, to thinking, build yeah. a team. But then having said that, World Cup was still on this time last year. So Gary Cox uh, wants us to speak about Mitch Garber. Alex, uh, we've seen a photo of him. If you follow the Rugby League on, on the, every social media channel, you'll see this morning that he has been training with uh, with OKR in pre-season. He's, he's tackling his old Leeds teammate, uh, Dan Maguire. Uh Alex, it looks like Mitch Garber is going to be announced as a whole KR player, well, pretty shortly, it, yeah. it does seem. Uh, will he go well for them? I think he will. I don't understand really why he's... I mean, maybe, I don't know why, but I, he's, a, he's a good player. I don't know why he wouldn't want to be... They wouldn't want him at Leeds. Or, I, I don't know, but yeah, I think he'll do great. I think he's a really good player. I always rated him, so... The, the, uh, is it, is it, there's a bit of movement in it. Yeah. I think... I think he, I think, the, yeah, I think the surprise is, is that Leeds are maybe looking at it so late. I well, think. that's what I'm thinking. Because yeah. it's November now, I'm thinking, right, I'm thinking the new people coming in, nothing big going out. But for me, he's a big going out. Because mm. I think that's how good he is. I think he's... Well, yeah, I, think, I mean, I mean, I, mean I, I probably don't rate Garbutt as highly as you do. But then at the same time, they, they're probably not in a position... You know, Leeds probably aren't in a position to have one out, one in. Right, yeah. Do you know what I mean? They need to be, they need to be adding players rather than losing. Yeah. Now, obviously... If, if putting Garber out brings a couple in, then, then fine. So uh, may, maybe they've looked at it and thought, well, we can save his space on the cap to sign, you know, like I mentioned before, and maybe his role that they saw in the squad could be filled by a young forward that they've yeah. got, potentially. But um, I think he'll do well. Uh, Hulk Howell, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, Hulk Howell, obviously... Solid signing for, the, for yeah. Hulk Howell. Hulk Howell, obviously, getting him to a little bit... It's, just, it's just about keeping Garber fit, isn't it? it there's no doubt in his talent and his ability on the field. He, he racks up a lot of metres. He, he seems to have a, his problems with injuries at Leeds over the last uh, one or two years. Um, on to the next question. Robert S. A lot of, a lot of Leeds thoughts uh, today. Robert S. What are your thoughts on Sebastian Ikehi for possibly going to Leeds Rhinos from Huddersfield Giants. We know that Simon Wolford is going undergoing a big revamp at the Giants at the minute. He wants to bring his own players in, put his own stamp on the team. Ike Hihifo, uh, fantastic player, made the Super League Dream Team in 2017. Um, but he is thought to be on, on one yeah, of that, well, he's thought to be one of Huddersfield's higher earners, and they probably need to ship him out to bring. Yeah, certainly. Bring Hudders, what Huddersfield's issue, certainly under Rick Stone in particular, was that they were just completely. They had no movement on the cap. They had players on long contracts. They were fully spending it. So that meant that when they wanted to sign or strengthen or whatever, they, they just couldn't. So you know, we've seen you know you've seen Danny Bruff move on. I, I wouldn't like to say I wouldn't be surprised if he was on a and a decent salary there, and they may feel that. Moving in on moving him on gives him a little bit of room, and that that you know he'd be a great signing for Leeds in, in in my opinion. The sort of player that because he's been in Super League, it's a lot less risky than maybe pulling someone in from the NRL on on big money. I'm, um, a, I'm a big fan of his. I, I think yeah, he, so, on on his days, one of one of the best. Yeah, so you know, you know, I could, I could I, you know, I certainly could see that one happening. Uh, Barry Forbes says, "When are the Magic Weekend details going to be announced?" We were, we were in the same position as you. We, we saw the little teaser that, that was put online on Twitter this morning saying that check the Twitter accounts at midday and, and you'll see some details about Magic Weekend. Uh, well, 
that, we're, that, still that, 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 we're still waiting here, we're still waiting. That tweet's been taken down, so I don't know if they've if Super League and the RFL have changed honest, the mind of, of when, when they're releasing the information. To be honest, when I seen it, I was like, because we've had such a great response to the Challenge Cup announcement yes. this morning, mm-hmm. it's like, just let that have its day and announce Magic Weekend another time. Maybe that's what we thought. Yeah, yeah that's my opinion. Um, right David Taylor says, need you on YouTube, please. It's quite, It will be going on, on, on YouTube in due course, obviously. We're, Without Dave Parkinson, who's in who's in Fiji, we're we're, we're not as tech savvy. As <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're missing Dave's. Uh... He, say, he says, but thanks for the discussion. How long a sentence has Mr. P got to serve? I think I think Mr. P is it Mr. Parkinson. I don't know who, who Dave's on about. <laughs> but we're, but we 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 wish Dave all the best. He's, he's currently in Fiji now, and he sent us some like bits over this morning. Yeah, we're really yeah. Through, so. um, he seems like he's having a fantastic time in Fiji and, and uh, we hope all is well over the Rob Giles. Right, we'll go on to this now. The the new look Challenge Cup uh, format, the, the 1895 Cup is the pick of the bunch, pick of the information coming through. Uh, it's it's predominantly for the lower leagues, the Championship and League One clubs, uh, minus Toulouse, Olympique and Toronto. It will give them a purpose to get to Wembley. Uh, it will be played on the same day as the Challenge Cup final, along with the Stephen Mullaney uh, Trophy, which will be played for before the Challenge Cup final. I think the 1895 Cup will be played after the Challenge Cup final, the main showpiece event. Uh, James, as a witness fan, uh, as a witness uh, Wignesian, uh, I bet you're, you're absolutely delighted this, this competition's been brought back. No, I well, mean, not just, not just that. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, not been brought back, but it's, no, it's, it's kind of the Northern yeah, Rail Cup. Not, yeah, I mean, the way the Northern Rail Cup was sort of just abolished overnight was disgraceful, I thought, because I thought, you know, genuinely, Championship fans really look forward to the Northern Rail Cup. It was a real opportunity for clubs like Batley to have, like, a big day out, and I think this is a tremendous... And, you know, I think this is a tremendous idea... You know, Phil Kaplan, Rod Stubbs, there's been quite a few people in the media, you know, even myself, have been saying, why not bring the Northern Rail Cup final back, or the Northern Rail Cup back, and play it before Wembley? Because it means that if you've got, you know, two teams in that people don't see often, more people, you, you're going to turn the final back into this festival of rugby league. I know we had the discussion last week about as Magic Weekend took away from the Challenge Cup final as, a, as an event, and it's like, that's not, this is almost like steering it back to, to that. It gives all Championship and League One clubs a chance for silverware, whereas at the moment, you know, it's a bit like only the top few clubs have got a chance of winning the championship. For all the players in those teams, you've now got an opportunity to play at Wembley, which is fantastic. Any fan now in the 37 professional clubs can now dream of watching their team at Wembley, whereas, you know, the reality is that maybe only 8, 9, 10 teams are ever going to have a chance of winning the Challenge Cup. Uh, and that's you know I, I myself you know I'm going to write a piece about this this afternoon I've never been to a Challenge Cup final basically because I want to go I want it to be a special occasion when I do go and I want it to be watching my team with my dad who have been going to the matches for with since I was a kid the chances of witness ever getting to a Challenge Cup final now are, are very slim whereas feasibly they could make the 895 Cup final whether it be this season or, or in future seasons and that for me is a you know, and you know, and that's not just for me as a witness fan. If you're a Rochdale fan, if you you know, gives those clubs something to to Drive really, on. yeah. And, you know, if you're mid- that, because that'll be the peak game for, for. Well, that's what I mean. If you're yeah. if you're a mid-table championship team, like take Dewsbury for instance. Dewsbury have been a team consistently over years who can compete with, you know, on their on their day they could in theory beat a Toronto or a Lee or a Witness, but. They're never going to win. They, 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 it's very rare that they're up there competing for the championship after the full season. Whereas now you're looking at this, you have to win what? Three, four games and you're at Wembley? I mean, you only have to take, you know, get a couple of lucky draws and then you knock off witness in the semi finals and Dewsbury are at Wembley. You know what I mean? And like, uh, you know, it's just a great, for me, I just think that's a, you know, like Newcastle, York, teams like that, even in the League One, you know, you look at York and Bradford last year, could they have knocked off a couple of championship teams? You know, it just gives everyone a little bit of a, you know, Boost. and I'm going to I'm gonna write this afternoon, if you look at football, every professional and semi-professional team in football can play at Wembley. FA Cup for the big ones, Johnson's Paint Trophy, uh, Czech Trade Trophy for, you know, League One, League Two. You've got the FA Trophy for Conference and the, and the top non-leagues. You've got the FA Vars, which is for effectively like your pub teams to get through. And it's like, or everyone in that pyramid can dream of playing Wembley and now we've got that in rugby as well. 
Um, I think, sorry to, to witter on, another good one, and I don't know whether this would ever be possible, but could you could you create an amateur cup, you know, for all the amateur teams that culminates in a Wembley final? Could you get the Women's Challenge Cup played there? I mean, obviously you can't afford four, <laughs> four games on one day, but is there, is there something that they could do to maybe... So, so would you... Would, uh, just asking you yeah. how it's... It's it's good to to see the eighteen ninety five cup brought into fruition after uh, a lot of people have, have wished for that to to, to come into our game. Uh, it's good because the the attendances will rise as well it, because it yeah. makes it into a showpiece event. I've, I've said that I I think rugby league is fantastic at making these like kind of festival like events. Obviously, you might have your opinions on Magic Weekend and what it's doing and what it's become, but the as a fan and I've been to these events and. The, Double header last year for the semi final. I'm a Saints fan, and I went. And I have every reason to hate that idea and hate that game, but my memories of that game are really good, or that day, because of the event side of it. So I think the fact that the the games are on the same day and it's going to bring fans from different clubs and attendances will, will in theory, could get better because you're drawing mm. fans to come see their team. So yeah, I think everything about it just puts a smile on my face and I really am excited it's, about it. It's, it's kind of a good thing. For, for example, say it's uh, Wigan Warrington in the Challenge Cup final and, and say uh, Widnes v Bradford. Bradford. You, you'll have the, the Wigan and the Warrington fans going with the se- separate teams as yeah. well, won't you, and supporting the different clubs. It, ge- it just generates that bit more publicity and a yeah. bit more of an electric atmosphere for them lower, lower league uh, teams and on, on the biggest stage as well. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it'd be brilliant. And, like, you know, I'd lo- it'd be great in the first year. You know, I know, obviously, you know, maybe you think if, if we'd, you know, at, you know, Witness and Bradford, I think I'm probably fair in saying they've got the biggest fan bases in the championship and it's like, you know, I suppose you know, for them, it might be good if both of them make it because it, it boosts the crowd a little bit. But wouldn't it be great if in the first year you had, a, a, you know, with all due respect to, to a Batley or a Jews, if you had one of them make it through, you know, and really have a, like a real underdog, you know, look, all of a sudden, the Rugby League Challenge Cup final, Wembley, that big occasion, you've got Batley playing there or, or Jewsbury or someone like that, and they get a real, they, they that would generate real Rugby League support, yeah. I think. Good news stories will just flood out. Yes, yeah, yeah. you know, and I think I think the other. I'm not sure. I'm not seeing this confirmed anywhere, but I believe the the reg, the uh, earlier rounds are going to be played in midweek, uh, and I think that's a good idea because I mean I know there's a lot of discussion about playing too many games, but in Championship you've got Sunday to Sunday, Wednesday night, you know, summer night, Wednesday night in the mid, you know, in June, July, May, June, July, you know, three midweek games that'd be brilliant. You know, under the lights a little bit. You know, when it gets a bit later on, brilliant. I think idea. There's, a, there's always I've always wondered why there's not more midweek rugby league because I know people say about travelling and players work and stuff but players non league football players work and they play every Tuesday night and you just, and they're going all over you know I, I do a lot non league football I've travelled three three and a half hours to cover to cover games in non league football so I think you know could you imagine you know could you imagine witness against Halifax at witness on a Wednesday night in the in the eight night five cup quarter final. You know, get Super League fans can go because obviously it won't clash with their team. I just think that it, it just it's just a brilliant thing, and I, I said this on Twitter. I think it's a, a brilliant announcement. Rugby League needs, <coughs> I think, or at least in this country, <coughs> more things to play for. Yeah. So the fact we've got it is just—I know it's a little more games and this, but it's something else to win. It's something realistically you can win, and I think that's fantastic. Hopefully, hopefully as well, it's it's not a shield. No, <laughs> yeah. hopefully it's a cup. Well, like, it's called the cup, so no, it's more than it's got be, surely it's got to be a cup because it's called <laughs> it's 1895. Cup. I reckon they're cheap to make. You know, that's yeah. <laughs> Um, David Taylor says, wishing Keithley well. Uh, hope they overcome their problems. A good place to visit as a neutral. Us two at Love Rugby League, we, we hope everything uh, is uh, progresses. We are trying Keithley. to get to the bottom yeah. of what's going on, but it's, uh, uh, we're hitting a few brick walls yeah. at the moment. Very complicated process. And then David also says, are you happy with the published loop fixtures in Super League, or shall we wait and see? Um, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't mind them. I, I'd much rather the loop fixtures. I'd, I'd much rather have loop fixtures than what we had last year where you have the odd Magic Weekend one. I think mm. I think having seven as it is now, seven loop fixtures is much fairer. I think long term, and I think Super has got away to have fourteen teams and play each other home and away and scrap the loop fixtures and that. And and I'd like to think that's what they're aiming towards. And then that then frees up an extra three weeks for internationals and and whatever else you want to do. Should the 
the Challenge Cup quarterfinals. <coughs> this is from Rob again. Uh, should the Challenge Cup quarterfinals be played as two double headers? Come to you for this one, Alex. Um, We've seen it happen at Bolton with the semi finals. Well, I I really enjoyed the semi finals and the fact we're making it an event. That for me, I love. Um, Quarterfinal. Do you know what? The only problem is there's there's not enough games played in the Challenge Cup overall. So if you start making the quarter final like that type of event, then you only you play what the Super League teams will play one like one game one game before one it. Game. So obviously it's good to have these events, but then it kind of takes away. Like, it's it, I think it'll just make the competition feel shorter, and it's already short enough. So so d- we would, need you, to, do, would, do, you, would you would you put the bigger teams like the Super League teams earlier in, back in <sighs> the earlier rounds, or I, would you just keep it as it is and have the have the semi finals as a double header? Uh, I think we should keep the semi finals double header because you, you you earn that right then to be in that semi final and the the winner gets Wembley. That's your reward, and then obviously you're winning at Wembley wins the trophy. You're in the quarter final, and it, you may, you haven't I don't think you've earned that right to have that event yet because it's it's, it's going to be the second game. Some teams play in that competition, so I I, I think it should be. Yeah, the best I, I mean, in my opinion, I mean, I know it's difficult because of the early rounds. I'd like to see more clubs enter the Challenge yeah. Cup at the start, and I would like to see the Super. I think the Super League clubs come in around too late now. I think they should be. The eight, I mean, the four come in at probably the right time, but the other eight, they should be coming in the previous round. Because I know there's a lot of talk about, oh, well, you know, it, it results in big scores, you know, so what, you know. Yeah. I remember, you might remember when, when Simmons Cross played at Wigan, and they, they dropped the goal or something mm-hmm. early doors, and it's just like, you know, as much as you're almost taking that beauty out of the cup by not having them fixtures yeah. take place, so. I, I think, I mean, obviously, you've, got, it's, it's, you've it's, got, the, the problem is fitting it into the schedule. Yeah, yeah it's, it's going back to the, the I know I, I don't like comparing it with football, but I, end up, I always end up doing it. We're, we're seeing football competitions when we see the likes of Manchester United, Manchester City, when they play small teams. Like, when Arsenal plays Sutton, yeah. you, you know Arsenal are going to win, but it still creates yeah, that yeah, spectacle. Yeah, for those just, smaller clubs. Yeah, and you still, and, you still have Arsenal go into, like, the little sheds of Sutton. Yeah. And, yeah, and even, like, I mean, even, as that as it sounds, I know Toronto are obviously a, a sort of a bit of an anomaly, but look how everyone got excited for when they played Salford and when they mm. played um, Warrington. Lee's another example, when Lee were in Championship and, and they went to Leeds and give Leeds a right good going over. And it was like, I think you just, you, you want to create you want to create more stuff, rather than just say, oh, this isn't going to happen. Well, if you don't let it have, if you don't give it a chance, of course it's not going to happen. Yeah. I think as well, like, uh, we talk about like, too many games and players getting over playing too much and but this is a chance maybe youngsters and academy players to get played in these early rounds so we get more chances to get players chances to play in these big clubs instead of being loaned out here there and everywhere they can play for their team and then obviously the smaller clubs that have that chance to play these bigger clubs and maybe get more fans in mm. pack a night out make an event of it I, I know that i know i mean i'm so i'm like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of more midweek games i think there should be more midweek games but i think there's obviously an issue with I think the I think part of the issue is obviously at the moment I mean it's good that they've got rid of the super eight and so now you're guaranteed the twenty nine games, whatever it is. I think the issue is is that clubs are reluctant to ditch a league fixture for a challenge cup fixture because there's this perception that they wouldn't sell as many tickets, but there's surely ways around that, yeah. I think. Uh the just going back to, to the Challenge Cup just for a moment. In twenty in, in twenty nineteen it will remain on the bank holiday weekend in August. But the year after, and for the foreseeable future after 2020, it will be moved to July. Uh, better for the competition? Yeah, yeah I think I, so. For, for, yeah. for me, yeah. it just having it in August, it's too late, uh, yeah. later on. It's, for too, late. Earlier, it's right? too late, it's too close to the grand final. Yeah. There's too much other sport going on. Whereas in July, there's not, I mean, obviously, you'll have the World Cup and in football and <coughs> and the Euros and stuff. So obviously, it'd be interesting to see where it is. You don't mm. want to have it too late in July. You don't want to. Have, you almost want it mid July, but obviously, you don't want to clash with Wimbledon and the uh, World Cup finals and yeah. stuff like that. So it'd be interesting to see where it where it places. I don't. Did they say? Have they said the no, exact they they said so. Because obviously, the Euro, I mean, Euro twenty twenty is going to be at Wembley anyway. So obviously, it won't clash with that because I think the final is going to be at Wembley anyway. But um, that that's yeah. I think July. I think that's. I think that's a good time. I think. If you can get it in that first, you know, if you if you, I know you've got like the British Grand Prix and, and stuff like that going on as well. You, but I think you're more likely to establish it in the sporting calendar there rather than on August Bank Holiday weekend when 
everyone's still getting giddy because football season has just started and um, and stuff like that. And obviously trains will hopefully be a lot better in July than uh, <laughs> August bank holiday. Just discuss uh, the latest transfer news in the rugby league world. Salford have uh, have signed former witness back rower Adam Lawson. Uh, it's it's good to see him back in Super League and back in the game over over on these shows. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, I think um, I think a lot of witness fans are probably disappointed that he didn't make it further. Um, you know, he decided to go to Australia. I think he just he was just probably a good example of a of a young lad who got the talent but wanted to be a young lad do you know what I mean and I think um, it's really interesting that you know he's not played well he's not played pro for three, three full seasons and Salford have given him a go so um, he's certainly got the size I think he's certainly got the attributes to be a, a really good Super League player um, it's obviously probably more more mentally I think that he's got a that's probably where he's the most work you know presumably he's you know he's obviously got to a point where he's wanted to come back so that's a good sign so I think that could be a real good pick up for, for Salford. Just going back to, to the Challenge Cup final, Saturday, July the 18th. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Uh, you know, before the school holidays, you know, obviously, presumably, no clash with Wimbledon because it's a bit late, no clash with World Cup final, no clash with, with British Grand Prix. I think it's real sensible, um, a real sensible move. It's, you know, it doesn't, you know, you're now, you're now looking at it. I suppose that the only issue, I guess, that I would raise. Is the double header how that impacts the double header? Um, but then in theory you could have Magic Weekend May, double header June, Cup Final July, Grand Final back in September start lot so and I think I, I'd like to see the Grand Final move to the last week September. Mm. Just, just only because I think short on the fixture list. Yeah. Well, whatever you do, I I think I'd like the Grand Final to be the last weekend in September, so that October and November almost become international months. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, more time. And then you, you know, and then like I said, when you're explaining it, you can say, right, we have Magic in May, Challenge Cup double letter in, in June, um, Cup final July, Grand final September, Internationals October. Yeah, I just think, you know, for me, I think, because then you could, you know, whereas now we've sort of edged into November a little bit, you could almost Summer start, yeah, do you know what I mean? Just start it a little bit. So we're um, bit so that's in January ended I, up I, I definitely think I think the season starting when it does is much better. I much prefer it starting earlier because I think I, I, yeah, I like how that's gone now. So we'll see what happens. Uh, David again is is uh, is our international break in June. Well, England don't currently have a mid-season test schedule for 2019. New Zealand are obviously facing Tonga. In, in that period, Aussies are reluctant uh, to, to play England. I think it's, and it's It's not in the plans, is it? So could we potentially see England France? Or well, I George, don't, I don't George King this week has, has even come out and said well, that Ireland, 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 Ireland need play, to play. Uh, England need to play. England. Now, we're talking about the Challenge Cup. Could you do it so you had an England game? You know, that you know, if you bring the Super League teams into the first round of the Challenge Cup, or what, you know, the, not the first round, but you know what I mean. Could you then have the international? So that basically your international players can't play in that first Challenge Cup match because they're playing in international. Yeah, that way it'd be a bit more fair. And then that, yeah, it's more I mean, of a could, you, could you do that? I yeah. think I'm. I, I mean, everyone hates the international break in football, don't they, during the season? And I just think to have a week off in the middle of the season, the clubs don't like it and the fans don't like it particularly. Now, you know, of course, you could play France on a Wednesday night, I suppose, which which might be better. In Lee? Not Lee. Do not know Lee got? Probably not Lee. <laughs> <coughs> somewhere, they need to somewhere play. better than they me. need to play. No they disrespect to Lee. I just, we need, I feel, uh, for, for me, I think they need to play. Yeah, I don't mind on curve, it's 200 nil. Okay, I would. But <laughs> just, they need to play. They need to play. We need to yeah. feel, we need to strike. I think I, I, I'd rather not rush it for next season and try and think about what they want to do. Because the, the thing is, in 2020, all of a sudden you're running out of weeks because if you've got Magic Weekend May, you've got the double header semi final in June, you've got the final in July, you've only got, what, six weeks there. Mm -hmm. Where you've got to fit in those three games, and then if you've got an international, if you're out the cup early, you're not playing for like mm. three weeks. So Scrap that's got to be considered as well. Putting an international. <coughs> We've had this conversation many times. I'd, I'd scrap my I'd, I'd scrap my Magic Weekend tomorrow. Maybe. I'd, I'd, scr I'd scrap it. Um, did, did he? It's a did, does for me. does and Magic Week that would reinvigorate the interest in the Challenge Cup final and the Grand Final? Does Magic Weekend move from the back end of May to the start of May? But then obviously you've got the issue where it clashes with football. Does it move to the start of the season like we've seen before? You know. Uh, for me, I've just been Magic Weekend, but that's just my, my opinion. Paper Talk. 
Uh, when it's the off season, transfer <coughs> rumours are rife in rugby league. A lot of a lot of fans get carried away. Uh, the pick of the bunch this week seems to be Junior Sao, uh, Salford at centre. Will he move to Castleford? Will he not move to Castleford? The papers are, are claiming that uh, he's turned down a move to the Tigers. Will he stay at Salford or will he move on? It's a bit of a strange one. Is he? Is that sort of a hangover from the Q cashier at Salford, where maybe they're wanting to get him off their off their books a little bit? You know, you don't know. I'm surprised. Casper, you know, is he? Is he, I suppose Jake Webster's gone, hasn't he? So maybe I think, I think he's a very similar player to Jake Webster. So maybe they're trying to fill the shoes. But I think he'd be great at Salford. I think that it's a perfect fit for him. I think we were saying before. I think I think Salford suits him. I think the fans love him. And yeah, it, it does. Sound, it does sound like for me. It, it, I mean, I don't know, but for me, it just sounds like Salford are perhaps trying to get him off the yeah, bench. Yeah, yeah. I think if if they had him, I think they wouldn't want to lose him. But I think probably on whatever he's on now, he's probably too much of him. Right. Yeah. <coughs> Jake Marmol to to Warrington, or is he staying at Huddersfield? He's out of contract, isn't he? I think so. Yeah. Um, well, will Huddersfield offer him a new deal? I don't think I. I'd be surprised if obviously Wolford's looking at his own. Do you think he should go to Warrington? Do you think? Well, I know obviously Warrington are looking for sort of an out. I mean, he's not going to play regularly. Yeah, yes, I, th- I think it was Warrington are looking for like a utility yeah, back yeah, yeah. like like a Mitch Brown. Um, that obviously they've lost through so, injury. I don't know. I, th- I think for 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 Jake Manor, he, he he does well there. I think he he needs to prove himself a bit more, maybe to. To do Warrington, do justice at Warrington, maybe because I, I mean, don't feel it. Be... I mean, realistically, you know, they've got Ratchet's going to play full back. Yeah. They've got Lineham and Charlie on the wings. So you're just there to kind of like you know, you've got Toby King, um, Toby King and Atkins, and I don't think it's yeah, it don't suit because Ryan Atkins didn't get the game to it's well, yeah, yeah, the course, yeah. Season, yeah. Didn't you know, Goodwin in the centre. So it's like <clears throat> unless you know, unless they're thinking he could play halves or the move Ratchford he's like he's not gonna and he's the sort he's like he's almost like the sort of player that needs to play. Yeah, that's um, how I believe, yeah. <coughs> you know, whether he, he signs for it and ends up on Gil Red somewhere. Yeah, but has, like, I think he has potential to be better than he is as well. I think he's a good player. So he's I, quite he's, he's a bit he's quite eccentric, isn't he? He's yeah, quite yeah. off the cuff sort of Yeah, player. so I think he has that potential to kind of step up but not playing won't he won't reach that. So I think Lee, he's the, Lee Weekly reporting that a uh, woman can potentially be after uh, Kevin Brown. I think, uh, no, I, think <laughs> I think this I think this is just being picked up off. I think a Warrington fan started <laughs> being picked off. Certainly no one I spoke to thinks there's any legs in it. Obviously that's the, the theory is that um Brown goes to London and Warrington bring drink water in, but uh, you know, I can't see that one. I can't see that one happening because I'm just a bit like, well, Kevin Brown left witness to go to Warrington to win trophies and He's had a couple of attempts. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's lost he's lost in he's lost in the finals and yeah. why wouldn't you want to try again next year it's not like you know he didn't go to Warrington to lose two finals and then give up and you know he's, he's in the swan tongue of his career now League Express <coughs> also claiming that uh, Uddersfield's move for uh, Newcastle Knights uh, winger Nathan Ross it appears unlikely as well and that also goes back to the Jim Mammal situation so because the move for Nathan Ross who wants to stay in the NRL because that move appears to be falling through. But they've got, they've got a wide team in the guild, right? So why would they need another That's a back line. Who knows? But apparently... Uh, I, don't see, I, can't, I don't see what they play. Apparently they Samuel play? Wolford wants another outside back. Uh, and finally we'll, we'll wrap up the show with the Golden Boot discussion. <laughs> oh God. Tommy Makinson was awarded and picked up the gold, <coughs> 2018 Golden Boot Award at a, a dinner, a celebration dinner in Leeds last <laughs> Wednesday. Uh, thoughts on the Golden Boot criteria, which is the best player at international level uh, since last year's World Cup final. Over to you, James. <laughs> well, I've already, ri- I've already written what I think, so uh, people can read it on league.com But yeah, no, I think... It's ridiculous what they've done yeah. to it. And it's unfair on Tommy makes it. If you wanted to do International Player of the Year, make it International Player of the Year. Don't don't destroy the heritage and the tradition of the Golden Boot, which has traditionally always been the world's best player. Your thoughts, Alex? Echo it, 100%. Not fair. Tommy makes him getting so much flack from Australian media. and It's not fair on him. He's a fantastic player. Had a fantastic year. The Saints, fantastic year internationally. 
but the criteria is just a and, joke. And I mean, and announcing it before the last, they play what three internationals a year, and they announce it before, before the last, the last one. Year. So, so that means next year is going to count Sunday. So Nick Graham will probably win it next year because he had a, he had a great match yeah. on Sunday. What was going to say then? Yeah, there, there was a little there, yeah, there, yeah, there yeah, weren't there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, fellas, I, I agree with you on yeah. this one. Uh, I think. Tommy Makinson has had a fantastic year at international level, there's no doubt about that. He only made his debut in Denver, but he's been fantastic for England in, in the four games he has played. But I think uh, the Golden Boot should be the world's best player throughout the year, which I probably would have given to James Tedesco. He was also nom- uh, nominated for the award. He won the, the, the NRL with the Sydney Roosters, won State of Origin with the Blues. Um, and yeah, it, it, it wasn't paid for the kangaroos last year. It, it that that criteria recently. shouldn't have changed to what it is. But if it did, and it has, they should have made everyone aware because the amount of people I'm coming into contact with. Oh, that's big people. Are, yeah, people are moaning but he's not about. Player, yeah, yeah like, they're moaning about making sim when it's the criteria. That's but saying. that's why you don't have an award and then completely change. Yeah, they it. shouldn't do it at all. But the fact they've done it, the, the least they could have done was tell people they've done it. Uh, uh, a couple of people have just gone in touch just before we finish. Robert S. said, Do you think Martin to pay? Well, come to Leeds. Sorry if I missed you you're talking about it before. Uh, we understand that the interest is there from Leeds into Power, but I think he is on a very, very large salary in the NRL, so it will uh, all depend on the salary cap situation with the Rhinos. And uh, last question from Rob. Uh, Giles saying, should the World Cup Challenge be at the end of Super League and NRL seasons before the international programme begins and maybe be played in an expansion area, i.e. USA, uh, there's talk of Singapore and Hong Kong? I think I think it's difficult just because um, you build up for your season to win Super League and you, you, le- you know, or the NRL, whatever, and you leave everything out there and then to them up and say oh a week late you've got to play to be the best team in the world i think that's a little bit too much could we get to a situation could, well i mean it's difficult because the super league and nrl seasons aren't really aligned yeah. it'd be nice if you could kick off the the, you know in january every year or whatever you have that big game wherever you want to have it america whatever i think we're, we're i think where it is now makes sense for where <coughs> rugby league in this country is now because we have we're two weeks into the season or three yeah, weeks that, into the season mm. so the, our teams have started to get going a bit more match ready and for them it's more of a pre-season thing I think the, it is difficult because of obviously but I think the it, season's yeah, been it, it's hard to line that up but I think it makes sense for now because they, on, well, on it, average they, yeah. they are a better <coughs> quality so I think it's good for them to face a really good Super League the best Super League side uh, who are match ready to get them ready for the NRL and it's good for our teams because we're playing some of the best players and best teams in world rugby so I know they're not finally tuned that they will be in the grand final but I think it just makes sense at the minute so has, has the World Cup Club Challenge lost a little bit of that spark that it once had do I don't think, think so uh, yeah. I, I don't think so I just think it's a difficult one because it, again it, this, it should probably turn into an event like the other ones that everyone wants to go to whereas I think at the moment it gets a little bit and it's partly because obviously you're never quite sure whether the Australian team is going to come and that's yeah. obviously and that's comes into schedule as well it's like yeah. if, you, if you could announce every year the World Cup Challenge is going to be on this date every year definitely and then start between the first yeah. and first definitely every <coughs> year for the next whatever years you can get behind it but when it's like is it going to happen is it going yeah. to happen is it going to be fun I remember when it was three games it was like it actually wasn't the top teams yeah, it was just yeah. whoever wanted to come it was just that takes away from it but yeah I agree I think if they can kind of organise it there's no reason it can't be a massive thing and the players love it the players really care about it so we should too. Uh, thanks for your opinions as always, fellas. Just keep an eye out, uh, keep an eye out on loverbelieve.com over the coming days. We've got six tackles feature online now. We'll, you'll be able to, to read uh, James's article later on this afternoon. And as always, our off the record feature, which will go live at lunchtime on Wednesday. Until next week, it's been a pleasure.